Hey everyone, um, this is just a quick video on how to save binary codes in Storage Deck. So you've got your encoder, you've got the codes, and you want to save them in a queue or whatever so that you can keep running your encoder instead of having to wait for things to finish. The easiest way to do this is with something like this. This is just a physical queue with a bunch of observers going up and down. So if it's up, that's a 1. If it's down, that's a 0. And you put the code in the back here. And then you put the box that it's assigned to next to it, and they will just travel to the front of the queue as far forward as they can go together. And you can put multiple codes, multiple boxes in, and they will stay with their pair. I'm just going to put a few more codes in so that there's actually a queue, and you can see that it does form a queue and just doesn't just merge all the codes. When I press this button on the front, it'll get the first code, and so on. I'll just keep going through the queue until there's nothing left. Um, the downside to the system is it's a, it's a lot of piston actions. Um, even if it's like a zero code or a code of very few bits, it still fires all of these top pistons, which is not ideal for lag. Obviously there are other options you can wire it to not fire all those pistons, but what I prefer is something like this. So this is the um, shulker box memory that I showed in the encoder video. What it does basically is it saves, in this case, a 10-bit code into a box using bottles to represent 1 and any random unstackable to represent 0. Um, I can just show it working like this. Um, as you can see, it's quite fast. Um, it's four game ticks per bit. And the way we make it so fast is that when we activate it, um, we turn on a clock that will put a shovel in the box every four game ticks, unless a bit comes through from the code. Um, if that happens, it'll lock the repeater and stop it putting a shovel in, and instead it'll just put a bottle in. Now we need a way to read the codes, so I've got two devices here that can do that. They're both the same thing. Uh, the one closest to me is not hopper locked, and the one in the back is. Um, but they work the same way. Um, essentially, we place the box above a bottle filter, and then we lock the hopper under the brewing stand for two game ticks when there would be a bottle in it. And that means the comparator can turn on, it flashes the rail line. And the rail line flashing creates a sort of AND gate with these pistons in the back. So that's how we can sync the time to the sort of position of the bit, if that makes any sense. Um, this is the same way that serial receivers work. Basically, we just power the comparator with two observers. One of them schedules it, and then one of them actually keeps it powered when it tries to turn on. All right, now I'm gonna show it working. So I'll throw a box in, and you can see the brewing stand flashing. Um, every time it does that is a one. Um, the fully hoplocked version, I've added some latches to, so you can see the code. So I'll just show you that one working. Should be a bit better to watch. Um, that's basically it, really. Uh, I've seen a lot of people asking about how this box memory stuff works, so hopefully this, uh, hopefully this was useful for you. Um, see ya.